I'm going to demonstrate how to take the spectra that we are working with, which are labeled down here in this sheet as one, two, three, four, five, and turn it into a plot so that you can actually see which elements are absorbing light from the star. And we're going to do a measurement with those. So each of these individual tabs has two columns. The first column is the wavelength, which is measured in angstroms. The second column has the name of the star. This is the, uh, well, that's the, the head of the beginning of the column is the name of the star and each of these individual numbers is the flux and it's the relative brightness of the star you'll notice that even though it shouldn't go above one it's a little bit noisy so it just goes a little bit above one but that would represent 100 percent of the light and uh zero on the column b would represent none of the light from the star we're making it to us which means that that particular element uh in in the spectrum would be doing all the absorbing all right, let's do some plotting and maybe it'll make a little more sense about what I mean. Uh, first of all, this is view only and I'm gonna wanna make, make a copy of it. So I'm gonna file, make a copy and save this into my own Google Drive. I'm signed in to my drive right now. So I'm gonna use my initials there and hit okay. So I get a copy of it. I don't need the original anymore and close that. Uh, notice I get all five of them. So when you're making a plot in Google Sheets, the one on the left-hand side, the column of data on the left-hand side is your x-axis. The column on the right-hand side is your y-axis. It doesn't have to be that way, but that's what Google assumes. So if I highlight the two columns by clicking on A and B and dragging over, so they're both highlighted, if I go to insert a chart, Google will put the column A on the x-axis, which is what I want, and the column B on the y-axis, which is what I want. Again, the x-axis is your wavelength. This is measured in angstroms. So instead of 664.35 nanometers, it's 6,643.5 angstroms. You can see a little dip right here. This is actually the nickel line and this is the europium line. These are two that we're going to investigate. The nickel line is present here in a much more uh, obvious way than the, the europium line. And you can see what I mean about the flux. It goes a little tiny bit above one, sort of wobbles around. The data is a little noisy when you're looking really close to one, but you can clearly see there's this nice little uh, inverted bell curve looking thing right there, which is what you expect for an absorption feature. So we're gonna change a lot about this graph. Um, let's change the, well, the first thing we should probably do is instead of it being a line chart, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna move down under the other types and I'm gonna pick a smooth line chart. It is not unreasonable to make it a scatter plot or just leave it as a normal line. I'm letting Google do something uh, kind of clever and guess what the curve should look like. And that just makes it a little bit easier to measure. We're going to be measuring this with our eyeballs anyway. So might as well let it smooth it out a little bit. Again, there's two features. Here's the nickel one over here. Here's the europium. Let's look at just nickel. So we're going to zoom in on this part. The way to do that, let's start with the y-axis. I'm going to click on the y-axis. And if you haven't already opened the chart editor, you can do it there. Uh, but once you do hit customize, so click on the y-axis and let's change where we start. Let's make the minimum value 0 0.5 relative flux and let's make the maximum oh, 1 point, maybe 0 0.5. So it zooms in a bit and then we're going to do the same thing on the x-axis. We're going to zoom in so that the, uh, let's see, where are we over here? 600 and, I mean, 6,000. 600 and 43 all the way over to 6644. Maybe that'll do. Not quite enough. 0.5. Yes, that's not bad. And I'm going to play with it a little bit and get a 0.3 in there. Yeah, that looks good. And again, we're looking at the, we're really interested in the inverted bell curve bit of this stuff, that, that V shape. Um, some other things which we should change. First of all, the title of the plot isn't the weird series of letters and numbers of the name of the star, by the way, this is a star from the Henry Draper catalog. That's the HD and the numbers, you know, what star number this was given when someone was doing this analysis. It actually could very well have been some of the famous astronomers that hopefully you've heard about before, like Andy Jump Cannon or Henrietta Swan Levitt. Um, let's hope it was, I'm going to say it was an anti-jump cannon star because I want to, but instead of, uh, versus wavelength, I'm going to put the name of the star and then the word spectrum. So it's HD 
one four one five three one spectrum. And then the um, horizontal axis really shouldn't be labeled the name of the star. That should be called something like, well, I want to put relative flux. So how much of the star's light am I looking at? Again, it should never go above one, but it's going to be a little noisy up there for reasons that are kind of not that important. Let's make it easier to read off the graph now that we've got X. The Y axis has a good label. If you want, you could, I mean, the X axis, you could add in parentheses A for angstrom. So someone really knows just in case there's some confusion. Um, and you could zoom in some more horizontally or vertically, I guess, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it there. And I'm gonna click on the Y axis and I'm gonna go instead of this vertical axis menu under customize, I'm gonna go to grid lines and ticks. So again, you can always hit this little uh, stoplight looking menu or hamburger looking menu, the three dots, go to customize and uh, everything that you can change is there. I'm under the grid lines and ticks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the minor grid lines and the major ticks and the minor ticks. And then we're gonna change, uh, again, we're doing the vertical axis. Let's change the steps. Let's make it 0 0.5 and the number of minor counts, let's make it four. So that when we, not 0 0.5, 0 0.05, sorry y'all. Now you can see that it goes, each one of the little tick marks is 0 0.51, 0 0.52, 0 0.53. So I can read it directly off the Y axis. That makes it easier. And uh, so for the horizontal axis, we're going to, again, grid lines and ticks. Let's turn on all the things that make it easy to read. And then um, let's do uh, five of these guys. But here, the step count doesn't need to be uh, as low. We're going to make it 0 0.1. So now we can see that each one of the tick marks is a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Again, it makes it easier to read. That's really what we're going for. Because our goal, now that we've got a plot, let's make it slightly bigger so we can really read. There.